Hello everyone, this is Caffeine to Code. So today we will be discussing a problem of density estimation. And we will be discussing a solution which is called the kernel method estimation or the Parson window estimation. So let's have a look at what exactly are non-parametric density estimation and in a much broader sense what exactly is density estimation. So what we do in this density estimation is that we are given a set of points. Uh, these points are in the form of a data set x1, x2, x3, x4 and xn these all are the points and these points are uh, generated from an unknown probability distribution px vector uh, this x may be a single uh, uh, this x may be a scalar, a vector or a uh, multidimensional tensor but you will be considering a sim the simple case of uh, uh, scalar and uh, how this approach is demonstrated for a scalar but it generalizes very well and there are uh, really uh, very minor modifications are required for generalizing this stuff so um, our task is to find an approximation to px which is the original probability distribution from which this data is generated so suppose these are our data points now one simple approach is that we can assume a parametrical probability distribution for example we can assume that this data is generated from a normal distribution with a certain mean and some standard deviation and then what we can do is we can use some existing te techniques of parametric uh, uh, density estimation such as maximum li likelihood or maximum a posterior distribution and then we can <coughs> find the values of sigma and mu and in uh, which in turn will give us a uh, density estimate for the original density uh, but there is an issue with this uh, approach because suppose our uh, data points were generated from this type of probability distribution and we have already assumed that the shape of our distribution is something like this. So this shape can never fit into this. However, we can vary the parameters. By varying the parameters, we can either vary the width of the normal distribution or we can move the normal distribution side by side. So in reality, we cannot use this shape to approximate a distribution of such a shape. So this is the major drawback of parametric uh, density estimation. So let's have a look at how we can overcome this approach. So uh, the second approach is that of a non-parametric density estimation. And what we do in that technique is that we do not assume a particular form of the probability density function. So our basic hypothesis, our basic assumption is that since uh, each data point x appears in the data, for every data point x that appears in the data, the probability distribution around x must be non-zero. Because if the probability distribution around x were zero, the x would not be generated at all. And since uh, uh, the probability density around that small point will be non-zero, so we assume a small density function surrounding the data point where uh, the spread of that density function is h. That is in other sense, wherever there is a data point, we assume that there is some small probability distribution acting in the proximity of that point. For instance, here we can assume that this this uh, data point uh, appears in the data and therefore the probability distribution will be non-zero around this and we assume that the the shape of this distribution is like this and it is spread in a very small uh, a, a small width or small area which is uh, denoted by h and since uh, it is spread in a small area by combining a large number of these small small density distribution we can create a distribution of our own choice it is uh, similar to the way we defined integral uh, area under the curve in integral calculation calculus what we used to do is that uh, we had a, a curve and we used to approximate the area under this curve by approximating some very small rectangle of width h and we used to calculate the areas of these rect rectangles by summing over the entire interval and then we used to apply the limit h tends to 0. The same case is here, we approximate that there is a small density 
for a very small width h around this data point. Now uh, the choice of the density function the choice of the density function is in our hands that is we can assume that this uh, density function is a normal around this point or we can assume that the density function is just a linear function for this duration h or maybe some other functional form. This density function which we assume is called a kernel function and hence the name kernel method for density approximation. Now we do this for every point xi in our data set suppose these are the points so for every point we assume a probability distribution around its proximity. Now suppose we have to find the density at a new point this is our new point and we have to find the density at this point. Now the density at this point may either come from uh, the distribution of the, this point or may come from the distribution of these points or may come from the distribution of these points. These all small distributions are in some way contributing to the density here. Now if we sum the density uh, generated from all these points we can get an approximate of what exactly the density is here. And in this way we can find the density at this point. So this is the way we, gen uh, we find the uh, density at a particular uh, point. Uh, putting it mathematically we can see that uh, let x0 be our new point x0 is the new point let us assume that our kernel function is fx0 comma h where h is the spread so we are assuming that our kernel function is represented by a function f x0 comma h where x0 is the point where we have to find the density and h is the spread of this uh, this uh, probability density function or this uh, or the interval for which this function has a significant value and then what we do is that uh, as I said earlier the density at x0 can come from the small density function centered around x1 x2 to xn that is the density at this new point uh, can be contributed by density from here or here or here so in uh, in simpler way the density at x0 is simply a sum of the densities at x0 due to the small functions which we approximated at the other points that is uh, due to the uh, small density approximated at x1 we have a contribution f1 x0 at point x0 similarly for x2 we have f f2 x2 and similarly for n we have fn xn and this n is simply a normalizing term because we can we can clearly see that this itself is a probability density function so it's integral over the entire uh, surface over the entire plane or over the entire coordinate axis would be 1 so each of these uh, value when integrated would equal to 1 and the sum will result in capital N that is the number of data points and therefore we divide it with the number of data points so as to normalize our uh, probability density function so mathematically we can write that the probability density at a new point px0 can be represented as follows oh uh, th there's an error here uh, actually uh, the point here would be x0 so the point here would be x0 and the function here would be fi so the uh, sorry i made a mistake here so the uh, we have to calculate the dens uh, uh, density at a particular point x0 and that x0 point will be an input to all these functions and these functions are the different functions which are uh, the probability density functions which we approximated at uh, probability density function which we approximated at uh, each of the data points. Now let's have a, an example about the choices of the kernel functions which we can take. Remember that uh, this is the kernel function. So the first most obvious choice of a kernel function is a uniform PDF. That is for each xi that is each point in the data we can consider a uniform distribution centered around xi and spreading in h length that is if I have this point in the data set then I can assume that the probability density around here is uniform and it is spread in this direction. The value would be 1 by h because that is the uh, value of the uniform uh, distribution and now when we are considering uh, the contribution of this 
this PDF at another point x naught. Now, if x naught will lie within the, these boundaries, from uh, suppose say this point is x one, from x one minus h by two to x naught minus h by two, then the, pro, uh, the then the density contributed at x naught would be one by h, else it would be zero. Okay, I hope that's clear. So now uh, our kernel function becomes f i x naught equal to one by h if x naught belongs to x one minus h by two to x x i minus h by two to x i plus h by two and else it is zero. So the kernel function takes this form and we can substitute the kernel function at our uh, uh, in the original equation and we will get this distribution. Another popular choice for a kernel function is a Gaussian kernel function. Now, uh, to represent a Gaussian fun uh, kernel function centered around a point xi, we can have its mean as xi because it is centered around its mean. So we can assume a Gaussian function which has mean as xi. And since the spread of our function is denoted by h, we can uh, we can assume it, either its variance to be h or standard deviation to be h. We can write this here. So I'm, I am I have assumed here standard deviation to be h, and standard deviation is a representation of the spread of the function. So it is actually uh, an accurate representation of the spread. So for any data point x i, uh, say this is the data point. X i is the data point. So I have a small Gaussian centered around this value. So the probability density for this Gaussian will be never zero. The probability density is never zero for a Gaussian. So if I am uh, finding the probability density at x naught, then the contribution of the ith Gaussian PDF, uh, the density at ith point uh, would be found by substituting the value of, uh, by putting the value of x naught in the formula for the standard Gaussian random variable or the normal random variable. And the mean is xi, the standard de uh, deviation is h square, which is the standard, uh, the standard deviation is h and the variance is h square. And so uh, the uh, contribution of a single function is this and substituting it in the original equation, we get a formula for this. Okay. So in the same way, we can take any other Gaussian kernel function provided that function correctly represents a probability density. That is the integral of that function over the entire space should be equal to one and the function should always be greater than or equal to zero. These are the necessary conditions required for a uh, kernel function. And once we satisfy the kernel function, we uh, carry out accurate calculations, we can very well approximate the density at x naught. Now, theoretically speaking, this method might not seem very like uh, very effective to you, but I will make a follow up video where I will show you um, programmatically how this function behaves and we will write up a small algorithm, uh, probably in TensorFlow to uh, see how this algorithm behaves on real data sets. So that's all from my side. Thank you for watching. And if you have any suggestions or comments, please mention them in the comment section. Thanks a lot.